So, are you ready to be looked at? Are you sending the messages you want? Are you telling the world who you are, who you want to become, and what you want in life? I'm not here today to tell you that modern people are superficial and constantly trying to judge you, because I simply don't think that's what's going on. I believe that modern people are constantly trying to understand you, And today, this is done through reading your visual information. What we wear today has become of greater importance than ever before. And I would like to give you an example to illustrate. Imagine a man named Jack. He's living in the medieval times. He's about 40 years old, and he lives on a little farm. He's living with his uh, wife, and their five children. Every morning, Jack gets up, and he gets dressed. And then he goes out working in the fields all day long. What Jack sees and experiences in a day is his little farm, the nature, his family, and his animals. And that is pretty much it. So during the 40 years Jack has lived, he has only seen 100 people. Then try to imagine a young man living today. His name is Justin. Justin is living in a big city, in a small apartment, and he's single. Every day, Justin also gets up, and then he gets dressed. But then he takes the train to work. And after work, he goes to the gym. He has to do some exercising. And after been doing this, he goes out to do some grocery shopping. And then when he came come home from uh, grocery shopping, he do a little bit uh, of relaxation, and then he meets up with a friend. They want to go to a bar to have a drink. In this one day, Justin seen about 800 people. But that is only in the physical world. Because during breakfast and work and grocery shopping, Justin checked his Facebook, his Instagram, his LinkedIn and his Tinder. And when he came home from grocery shopping, he also did some shopping online. So that is an extra 200 people. So all in all, he has seen about 1,000 people in one day. What I would like to illustrate with this example is how our society has developed so that the amount of people we meet in a day has increased dramatically. And so has the amount of visual information that we have to process. So every day we perceive thousands of different visual images. And all this information has to be stored somewhere. Otherwise, we had to start from scratch every morning and learn everything all over again. So our brain categorizes. Many years ago, this was done on a very simple level. Like, is that animal going to eat me, or am I going to eat the animal? Today, our brain has the exact same brain function. It just works on a lot more complex level. So if we look at this photo, It isn't just a man wearing six different kind of pants. Well, it is, but what I would like to show is it is an example of complex categorization. So our brain understands the connection between different kinds of pants and different persons wearing them. This ability to categorize is used a lot more by Justin than Jack. Because Justin lives in a society full of people and full of visual information. And to navigate in this, categorization helps him. His brain has mapped all his former experiences. So when a policeman shows up someday, 
he will know immediately. He has to stop and he has to listen. He also knows that when he sees this sign, he has to be aware. Because maybe the floor is wet. And when he sees these guys, he knows which kind of music they like to listen to. But of course, sometimes the floor isn't wet. Someone has just forgot to remove the sign. And sometimes these guys, they like classic music, even though they wear baggy pants. Well, so the information our brain is giving us is not necessarily true all the time. But nevertheless, it is the information our brain is giving us. The information that fits with earlier experienced similar situations. So every day, people look at you. Not because they're being judgmental or not capable of appreciating inner values. No. They simply try to understand you. Who you are and what you want. They're trying to communicate. And the way we communicate in a society dominated by visual information is through visual information. Luckily, our brain understands visual images very well. Actually, it loves it. Because it saves energy. And that is the only thing our reptile brain really cares about. Saving energy to keep us alive. And I would like to illustrate with a little exercise for you guys. So I'm going to show you a picture of a smartphone. And I would like all of you to find Facebook as fast as possible. Okay? Well, that's the smartphone. <laughs> Great. Now try to find Facebook here. My guess is that all of you were faster when you had to find Facebook through images than through text. Because our brain understands pictures much better and much faster than text. And maybe that is the reason why our society has developed into a visually mediated society. When we don't have much time, we need to understand our surroundings very fast and very effective. And a way to do this is through visual information. And when we understand our surroundings through visual information, our clothes becomes of great importance. It becomes a symbol of who you are and what you want. So when you look at the person sitting next to you, you don't just look at his or her clothes. You try to see what is under it. Just as you do with your smartphone, you know that the F for Facebook is not only an F. It is a whole dimension full of family and friends sharing pictures of, well, babies and parties and animals. We do the same thing when we look at each other's clothes. We try to see the information under it. So our clothes communicate, just the same way as symbols do. And in my opinion, clothes is an extension of our body language. Our body communicate, and so do our clothes. Most of you are familiar with the term body language, that our body communicate. And maybe some of you have even seen the TED Talk by Amy Cuddy about the powerful effect of body language. In her talk, she explains how our chances for success can be increased by doing a powerful body position. So just by doing a powerful body position, like this one, not only will you feel more powerful, others will also perceive you as more powerful. And I believe the same thing is going on when you get dressed. All of the women here probably know the feeling of wearing high heels. And the men probably know the feeling of wearing a nice suit. Suddenly, you feel confident, and others will see you as confident as well. So something physical can affect something psychological, and this works both ways. So, if you feel powerful, your body language will become powerful. But what Amy found out was 
that this is also working the other way around. So if you just do a powerful body position, well, don't try to be a monkey, but just try to do some uh, powerful body positions, then you will automatically feel powerful. And this is also working when you get, get dressed. So if you feel powerful, you will dress powerfully. And if you dress powerfully, you will also feel powerful. So no matter what, no matter if you felt powerful or not to begin with, you will end up feeling powerful and others will see you as powerful. So all these theories and studies bring us, of course, to one question. What should I wear? I believe the best thing you can do is to dress in a way that shows what you want in life. Because when you dress according to your future goals, you will automatically attract the people that can help you achieve them. And I can give you a little example. One of my friends has a very good education and very good grades. He has been working in the same place for some years, but he isn't quite satisfied. He is doing a lot of analyzing and working with Excel all day long, and it really bores him. What he really wants to do, and what he dreams of, is working in a creative department. In this environment, he feels alive and inspired. And he knows, deep inside, this is the place he belongs. But he had a problem. Every time he went to a job interview, he showed up in some clothes, showing a guy working with Excel. So the interviewers, they always viewed him as a guy working with Excel. They couldn't see his potential. He, they couldn't see what he could actually contribute with. But this changed one day. He began to dress like he already had the job. So instead of dressing in clothes that showed what he was working with right now, he dressed in his future job. More creative, more loose, more colorful. And suddenly, others could see what he had been trying to say with words for years. So if you want to be, let's say, a graphic designer, you shouldn't wait to dress like one until you get the job. You should dress like one right now and let the clothes help you get the job. So don't dress to show how far you have come. Dress to show how far you want to go. Dress to show what you want in life. Dress to tell a story about who you are, who you want to become and what you want. So the question is, what do you want? What are your dreams? And are you wearing them? Try to take a look at your clothes and ask yourself, am I wearing my past, my present or my future? Thank you. Thank you.